Welcome back to the third tutorial in the tutorial series for Python for Absolute Beginners by One Stop Programming. So here we start off with the program that we ended with in our last tutorial. Uh, and I'm going to go up, go ahead and open up a command prompt again. I just want to show you guys something really quick. Uh, if we go to our Python shell, we can just get you by Python. We get these three prompts. We can type whatever we want. I can just type x equals 1. And I can type x. We see x equals 1. So you might have been like, ah, oh, control C, or control C gets me out of there, and then exit will also get you out of there. So that's how you quit the uh, Python shell, is you can type control C or exit, and that will both uh, get you out of the Python shell and back to a regular prompt. So we're just going to get back to my desktop so we can run Hello World. So here we leave off with the same program that we had last time. So we're just going to get rid of uh, my var entirely for now. And the next thing we're going to go over is conditional execution. So conditional execution is what makes programming actually powerful. It what It's what turns a script, which is essentially just a list of commands that run all the time and there's nothing you can do about it, like this. If I run this program 100,000 times, it will always print hello world, it will always ask me what my name is, and then we'll always print what I said my name was. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's not really any modifying what it does. However, if statements and conditional execution allow you to, as the programmer, define certain paths for your code based on certain conditions. And this is by far the most powerful tool that you have as a programmer. So in Python, it's very straightforward. This is going to be a pretty common syntax for other uh, Python st structures as well. So we type if, and then opening and closing parentheses, and then a colon. And then what we want to happen if the thing is true. So I left this blank, but this is going to become our condition. So let's say our condition is if my name equals Kevin. So remember what I said in the last video, that does not mean equals. That is assignment. This means equals. Double equals equal sign is the evaluator for equality. Uh, single equals means assignment. So as you would read, my name gets the value of input what is your name. That's how you'd read this line. You read this line my name equals, or if my name equals Kevin, then. So you can read this, if my name equals Kevin, then. So uh, logic there. So if this evaluates to true. So if this whole thing, this is either going to evaluate to true or false my name is either going to equal the string k-e-v-i-n or it is not going to equal that string. If it does not equal that string this will evaluate to false and that if statement will not run. If it does it will evaluate to true and that if statement will run. So then we're going to print Kevin is great. And then we're going to save that we're going to go to our Python script. We're going to type Python. Hello world. What is your name? My name is Kevin. Kevin is great. It's still printed my name. If we run that again, again I just hit up to run the script again. Uh, that's the up arrow. I type my name is Bob. It says Bob, but it doesn't say Kevin is great. So that is the power of having conditional execution. So let's just go into another couple things we can do with that. We can just go down here and type else and then colon and then print you are okay. Save that and then run. My name is Bob. You are okay. So here uh, we have the if else construct which is if this is true, then run this. Otherwise, run this. 
So under no circumstances will it print Kevin is great and you are great. So if I go back here and just go Kevin, it says Kevin is great. It doesn't say you are great as well. Um, so there you see that this, when variable equal, when my name equals Kevin, simplifies to true, and then this runs. So if I were to save that and run that, it would say Kevin is great all the time because this expression is true. It also, like remember when we said in the previous video that my name evaluates to whatever the value of my name is. The same thing happens here where this whole thing evaluates to true or false. Now if this were false, then it would just say you are great no matter what I typed in. Or, you are okay. There's no real reason to ever have an if statement that is either always true or always false, but it's important to show you guys what is actually going on behind the scenes there. The other thing we can do is else if. So we can do that in Python by typing ELIF. That stands for else if. Else if my name equals Bob. Bob is okay. Whoops. So same syntax for the else if as the if or the el if. Uh, you have the elif open parenthesis, the condition you're evaluating for, followed by uh, closing parenthesis, followed by a colon, followed by a new line, a tab and then what you're going to do if that condition is true. So here we can run this again. Kevin. Kevin is great. Bob. Bob is okay. And if I just type gibberish, it doesn't say anything because there is no else statement. So if this, else if that, else nothing. So it doesn't require that you have an else statement. However, it is very common that you usually do have an else statement. So the else syntax is just else, colon, new line, tab, and you're going to want to make sure all these are lined up. So if I started typing here, it would probably get angry at me. So print, hello world. So what this is, you can read this if statement, if my name equals Kevin, then print Kevin is great. Else if my name is Bob, print Bob is okay. Otherwise, or else, print hello world. So if neither of these conditions are true, then print hello world. So we can see that now. Check my gibberish, and I get hello world. So that's the pretty good introduction to conditional execution. There's also other things you can do here other than just the equals uh, operator. You can type not equals or which is exclamation point equals. So if we run that, hello world, my name is Kevin. So we see hello world there because what happened there is I typed in Kevin. So my var is Ke or my name is Kevin. So this was Kevin does not equal Kevin, which is false because this is does not equal with the exclamation point. So false, and then my name, or then Kevin, because this evaluates to Kevin, equals Bob. That is also false. So then else print hello world. However, if, if I typed Bob, Kevin is great because the string Bob does not equal Kevin, that is true, so we print Kevin is great. So let's define another variable here. Let's say, let's get rid of this print my name because we don't really need that. Let's say my var equals input enter a number. So then we can say Instead of just this simple if statement, we can go mine, let's change this back to equals. 
uh, for simplicity's sake. My name equals Kevin, and my var equals zero. Now remember when I say equals, I mean double equals, which is our uh, logical operator that evaluates for equality. And for and, we just type and. So what this is going to look for is this is going to say, my name equals Kevin, and my var equals zero. And the way this is actually going to be evaluated is it's going to evaluate this first, and if this is false, it will immediately go to else if, because it doesn't care about this. This is just kind of, this is not really important for you to know, but it is a good uh, introduction to how this is actually working on the back end. So it's going to evaluate my name equals Kevin, and then and my var equals zero. So if this is false, it's just going to not even going to bother with this, and then just go right here. So my name equals Kevin, and my var equals zero. So if if and only if both of these conditions are true, it will print have Kevin is great. So let's save and try that real quick. Hello world, what is your name? My name is Kevin, and number equals one. So it prints hello world because this is false, or this part is false, which makes this entire expression false, this is false, and then else. So as you can see, we kind of get to simplify this whole expression uh, by simpl simplifying its parts. So this is true, so we can simplify that to true, uh, and then we could simplify this to false. True and false all becomes false. So here we took this big long expression and just simplified that based on the input values. That's something that if you're having trouble with, it will come faster um, and more easy when you have very long expressions. It's definitely a useful skill to be able to go through that and look at why something is not happening or something is happening when you have a complex uh, conditional flow. Uh, we'll go over more logical operators, like we could also change this to or and not equals. Um, so or, it's kind of the opposite of and. So if this is true, it will immediately stop evaluating and run this. If this is false, it will then check this. And if this is true, it will run. So or, either of them can be true, and both of them must be true. If either of these evaluate to true, the whole expression evaluates to, t uh, to true. And then this will run. So in future videos, we're going to go over functions so we can kind of actually get some useful functions out of our code uh, and start building applications that do things. In a later video tutorial in our intermediate series, we'll actually go over how to make a uh, simple text-based game, which in Python is incredibly easy. Uh, we, I mean, you pretty much already know everything you need to to get a simple 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 game going but in the future tutorial we'll go over uh, functions and we'll go over loops and more constructs like that so stay tuned for more information thanks for watching